the idea behind Horcrux encrypted messaging is that we, uh, since the revelations of Edward Snowden, have learned about massive dragnet monitoring of different communication channels uh, that the NSA has access to. And also probably every other major nation state has access to messaging platforms either directly on the back end through zero day vulnerabilities. Uh, they potentially have infiltrated the crypto systems as well so that even some things that we think are secure, they have access to. And so they have access to a lot more messages than, than we had originally thought they'd had access to. Um, but, but one thing that is happening now is that it's not entirely uh, one, one pole world where the US is running everything. We see increasingly that Russia and China are, are running their own sophisticated technology stacks and they have their own uh, equivalents to the NSA that are spying on their own citizens and other citizens. But there is probably, probably maybe the NSA, probably no country that has access to everybody's platform. And this is the, the key part of the, of the system that we're relying on. Um, fundamentally, how do, how do we send a message from one person to another, knowing that uh, these, these, these security administrations have pretty deep access to any given one messaging system? Well, if we can split, take our message and split it up into multiple separate messages, that we send on every possible messaging system that we think is independently secure, one in US, one in China, one in Russia, then if we, if, if, if unless some system has able to attack and penetrate all of those messaging platforms, then we can make sure that that's secure. And I just describe a specific way to do that in a way that's pretty simple and has a lot of security guarantees even if things like private, private and public key encryption are hacked. Um, so here's, here's basically a, a visualization of, of the design. So uh, you'll start with each, with the sender and the recipient have each having a, what we call a magic wand, which is basically just a simple device that where you can type in a message and then encrypt that into multiple uh, sub messages, or we call them horcruxes. So imagine like a really simple device uh, manufactured in the US or in China, and it doesn't have Bluetooth, it doesn't have Wi-Fi, it doesn't have any external access, but you can type in a short message and click encrypt and it'll show you three different other messages, or one or two, at least two different other messages that you can send on independent messaging channels. So you'll, you'll type on this device, hello, hello, Arthur and then it'll give you a scrambled text and another scrambled text. And then you'll send that first scrambled text on one channel. For example, you could send it to the Signal app on an iPhone. And then the second message, which is also a scramble, uh, will be sent through say WeChat on Huawei. And that's more of a Chinese centered uh, application. And so, the idea is maybe the NSA or the US has some kind of backdoors into Signal or something like that, or backdoors into iPhone, but they might not have a backdoor on the like, highest model and Huawei, which the Chinese bureaucrats may use, and they may be using WeChat to con communicate with each other. The basic idea is uh, some, somewhere like the elites in the US are using Signal to chat in, in an encrypted way. Our, our, our bureaucrats, our, our Congress people are talking, and our financial people are talking on, on Signal. And they're, you know, the, the Chinese state is, has, has, has some secure method that the NSA is not spying on in China. And so if we can send messages on both of these channels, then there isn't any one government that can reassemble the whole message. So basically we send the message on these two different platforms, it's, re it's received on the recipient's end, and then uh, they can take each scrambled message and put it together onto, again, their, their magic wand and that again, doesn't have internet access in any way, and then assemble that message that says, hello, Arthur. And we can go into the details of how this is designed to be very simple and very secure, um, but that's the fundamental idea. If you separate the messages out, it's gonna be hard to figure out exactly, and maybe even impossible for, for, any, for almost any government even to, to access. 
So I'm going to scroll over here. Uh, so the main secret, main thing that's going to make this very uh, trustable is that we're not using any kind of complicated uh, RSA, like prime factor based encryption that which could be broken. Maybe the NSA has quantum computers that can break some of these encryptions that they haven't released publicly. So we're gonna use a very simple encryption. It's called a one-time pad. The nice thing about a one-time pad though is that one-time pad is perfect secrecy. Um, it gives you no information about it. There's no you know, fastest computer ever in the world can't hack, can't figure it, can't crack a, a one-time pad. So by using the one-time pad in the magic wand to encrypt the Horcruxes, we have perfect uh, secrecy such that even if you break half of the Horcruxes or almost all of the Horcruxes, as long as one is securely in, is sent and hidden, then the, the cracked Horcruxes reveal no information about the message. The other important thing about using a one-time pad is that it's a very simple, very simple encryption system. Uh, a lot of crypto systems have been broken, for example, SSL and Heartbleed, such that they had programming errors in the way that they are implemented. Uh, if anything is, you know, uses non-trivial math, there are many different ways that um, the different matrices could be corrupted or, or just, the, you know, some of the loops could be set up such that it, there's a way to sneak in a bug. We want the magic wand to be very simple, maybe even programmed into hardware and do something very simple. So the one-time pad just uses XOR and it can take a zero and a one XOR it. And just, it's a very simple function, very easy to audit the code to do that. And we can trust fully and audit fully that the magic wand is very simple and that you can both encrypt and decrypt very safely. Uh, here's a visualization of maybe, you know, possibly the different uh, Venn diagrams of, of what is already cracked. Probably a lot of email servers and email lines and, and maybe very simple basic SSL is, is already very accessible to the NSA and to some of the hackers in, in Russia and China. Um, and you know, WeChat probably is very compromised by China and possibly none of others, perhaps that they, they don't want other countries to be able to access the WeChats of its private citizens, and that might be very sa safe. So, you know, as we investigate more, we might find out that there there's uh, some number of of different channels that you can use, such that there isn't any one entity except the sender and receiver, which can find and get all the messages, and then figure out what the different Horcruxes are to save to to decrypt it. And there's other things you could do because you can basically, with the one-time pad, it's very simple to break it up into any number of horcruxes. You could send it along all the different channels. You could even send a, a horcrux in plain sight using steganography. Steganography is the, the art of hiding a, a, an encrypted message in plain sight. For example, you can put it into a photo and just into the noise values of a photo. So, any, anybody who's trying to read what your Horcruxes say won't even know how many Horcruxes you have and where they are. And then even if they hack a, so your signal account, they will know that you also hid one of the Horcruxes in an image that you tweeted in some of the subpixel values. So wh whereas your receiver, you could have pre-planned pre a way for them to receive messages that they could start to reassemble the messages in a way that an attacker might not be able to figure out um, the other really nice thing you can do with this is uh, a lot of people, including Jeff Bezos, have been attacked with zero-day attacks on the OS itself, uh, which means that even the most secure messaging apps like Signal or Threema, who are both open source now, uh, they are vulnerable to the operating system. And there's really nothing you can do to get around that. They're very complicated applications. However, Horcruxes can give you an option to mitigate that a little bit because instead of relying on any one single app or any one single o, you know, app running on a one single OS, you could break up your message into equally secure pieces and send it on multiple OSs. So now you've at least increased the cost of an attack. So instead of having to just crack the WhatsApp or crack the iPhone, now a, an attacker will, would have to 
use attacks both on an iPhone and Android phone and you know whatever email server and and be able to spend many millions more dollars on on zero day attacks to 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 find you and and even then they won't even necessarily an attacker won't necessarily know if spending a million dollars on a zero day attack for an iPhone for your iPhone will get you the go get them all the horcruxes maybe it'll only get them one of the horcruxes but you've hidden those hor other horcruxes somewhere they haven't even realized where they are yet so you, you've increased the cost super linearly of of these of of cracking a phone in a way where if, if anybody was relying on one single messaging app or one single OS, it just has no way of preventing. Um, I'll go into the magic wand. So the magic wand, ideal, in an ideal world, uh, is a very simple piece of hardware, simple eating screen, no network ports, no USB, no Wi-Fi, no easy way to like accidentally have a side channel attack. And it, all it does is, is you can type a message and maybe the only way it can communicate is through a, a QR code. Maybe you can scan a QR code to, to actually get the message from that magic wand into your signal app. And then you just send that. And I've actually built a demo that, that works with it. It's very simple. Um, and then possibly if you want something less secure, you could have that app use a local Bluetooth connection, but that does open possible new channels of attack, although you would make it, that would make it easier to use. Another option to make it even easier to use is to, instead of using a separate piece of hardware, uh, you could actually have a magic wand app on one device. And this is, this is what I kind of tested and made a, a demo of. Obviously that's much less secure because you put your risk back into one, sim one single OS uh, that is connected to the internet. And as you know, zero day vulnerabilities are, are a major issue, but you still get some of the benefits. If, if, if your attacker only has access to the network and doesn't have access to zero days or doesn't know how to find your device, then uh, an attacker that only has access to the network might not be able to, to gain access to your phone, in which case you might be able to use the magic wand as an app on your phone and just send it through different messaging apps. So I go over different uh, threat models that this involves. Uh, for example, the, it could be a nation state observer that's looking at your ciphertext. Perhaps they have a passive attack to like read your messages or maybe they can even modify your messages. Um, they can maybe compel providers to, to provide information on the decryption key so that anything encrypted with a, a private encryption key that they have access to, they would be able to read. Um, obviously this doesn't cover every case, but it covers a lot of cases. Um, and then there's a lot of different ways that this could fail. Um, for example, uh, you do need every Horcrux to reassemble the message, which is a positive in that the attacker would need to receive it or to get all of your messages. But it's also a downside because if you, if they, they could take, they could denial of service one of the channels and then you lose one of the Horcruxes and now your receiver can't receive the message. And normally when you, you know, when you do that, when you lose availability, then people use less secure means. Um, one way to avoid relying on all the Horcruxes is to use a much more complicated encryption system. Instead of using one time pad, you could switch to Samir secret sharing, which is maybe you only need uh, M of N of the Horcruxes in order to reassemble the message. That's totally something that you can do. It's a little more complicated to program. So it, it does leave potentially the possibility of, of some software bugs, uh, much more complicated than XOR. Um, but it, it is a way to get some more robustness in, in sending the messages. Um, oh, one vulnerability is uh, probably the magic wand would be manufactured in China, which uh, could leave a potential possibility that China could, some the Chinese government could put in a, a not very good random number generator for the one-time pads into that device. Uh, if they could put in other pieces of code or maybe even bug the device. So there is a risk there uh, of not having menu, you know, a piece of manufacturing of the magic wand done in, in your country of, of trusted choice. Um, yeah, and there's a bunch of different on this website, Horcrux encryption messaging .com, you, There's a bunch of different uh, ways that things could be attacked. Um, but I'm curious to see if anybody has any questions about 
how this could work and what what they would like to see. And uh, basically I'm telling people about this to realize that there are other possibilities to get around some of the massive, massive uh, security vulnerabilities that we're starting to see through uh, very deep network access and very deep zero day vulnerabilities on OSs. Thank <laughs> you.